this was an interesting article. Um, I heard about this a little while ago. This is in upstate New York, a nursing home by the name of Auburn's Commons Nursing Home. Right? And this is, I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't originally fa found this on here, uh, but I heard about it via Ron Paul that Ron, Ron Paul had talked about this. And it says a nursing home had zero uh, virus deaths. Then it uh, vaccinates residents for the virus and deaths begin. And this, of course, came out Sunday, January 10th, 2021. This is thing, things seem to be working backwards at the commons on St. Anthony's Nursing Home in Auburn, New York. Vaccinating people is supposed to reduce or end COVID deaths, right? But at the commons, such deaths are reported to have occurred only after residents began receiving uh, the virus vaccinations. It says James T. Mulder wrote Saturday um, at Syracuse.com that until December 29th, there had been no virus deaths at the commons. December 29th, when deaths of the residents with coronavirus began occurring at the commons, is also Mo's article uh, discloses seven days after the nursing home began giving COVID vaccinations to residents, with 80% of the residents so far having been, vac been vaccinated. Over a period of less than two weeks from since December 29th, Mulder relates that 24 coronavirus infected residents at the 300 bed nursing home nursing home have died. Is the timing strange or coincidence? There's a little little article here. You can easily Google this information if you're looking for uh, more information. But there was another, another article, of course, that I came across in the Sun, talking about 143 Brits have died shortly after uh, the jab. Uh, but vaccine, but of course, you know, as they always say, vaccines didn't play a role. And the reason that I bring this up as a nurse is that, of course, there are many individuals that, you know, overwhelmingly elderly patients are more susceptible. But like I've shown in numerous videos, that the survival rate, even among the elderly, is quite high. I believe it's about 95%, according to the CDC. And then you'd have to pair that with the ability of whether or not your elderly relative will survive taking the jab or taking uh, the Moderna jab. Because if you actually do just a little bit of research, like, for example, there was um, like right, the 23 in Norway. Right, the, the 23 that had passed away in Norway. And these are overwhelmingly elderly patient. Norway investigates 23 deaths in the frail elderly patients after vaccination, right? And so it's always, it's always that no, there's no way, you know, that the vaccine played a part. And like I said before, when you, when you keep this principle in mind, of you show me the incentive, I will show you the outcome, right? And so obviously, overwhelmingly, the incentive is for people to take the jab or whatever, whichever version, you know, that is available. But you still have to weigh the costs of losing your loved one to the vaccine. I have spoken to numerous people um, that I work with that took it and many people got sick. Many young people, many young people who were in their 30s. Uh, explained to me that they overwhelmingly felt ill enough that they had to call out of work. One of the uh, ICU attendings that I spoke to yesterday so, told me the exact same thing to the point she was like, I'm not going to get the second jab. I'm not going to get the second dose because she felt so sick, ICU uh, critical care attending, um, that she ended up having to go to the hospital, right? Because she was, and she was like, I've never been that sick. And of course, this is not to shed some sort of false information but it is most certainly to at the very least to give people to do your research right 
Don't blindly believe what people tell you. You can easily go on to any search engine, preferably one like DuckDuckGo and not Google, that basically you know, hinders what will pop up, right? So they kind of filter what they don't want you to see. So you're better off using another search engine. I typically utilize things like DuckDuckGo. And at the very least, if you're an elderly person and you're fearful thinking that you're, you know, you're kind of like might as well, you know, because you might, you might think that you're going to lose your life. At the very least, let this woman give you some comfort, right? For those of you who are elderly or you have elderly individuals that you're worried about, there's a 117 year old nun who beat COVID to mark birthday with champagne, red wine, and mass, right? So she was 116 years old when she contracted the virus. And eventually, three weeks later, she passed it to the point where she where she went on to say in, you know, in the article that she didn't even realize that she had it. It was that's how, I guess, benign for her that the vaccine was. So it just goes to show you, like I've shown overwhelmingly when I could you know, in comparison to numerous people, you know, there are plenty of people who have had it, who are elderly, and they've been just fine. Most of the patients that I've had that were elderly, I've, there's so many of them have come through, 90-year-olds, 80-year-olds, etc. Overwhelmingly, most, mo the majority of the ones that fare badly are typically uh, obese patients. With on, on no matter what spectrum, elderly, relatively young, 50s, 60s, 30s, these individuals typically do not fare well. But I'm just going to leave it at that. I know there's a lot that gets thrown out at people, but it's important to have perspective. And from healthcare workers, when I talk to healthcare workers, you know, all we see, for the most part, is the sick and the dying. But I'm like, that's who we're expected to see because healthy people don't need a physician, just like the Bible says. A healthy, healthy people don't, don't need a physician. They don't seek treatment because there's nothing wrong with them. And so those individuals, we don't see. We don't see the millions that have contracted the virus and are doing just fine. The only individuals that we see overwhelmingly are those who are typically have a long history of medical problems. And unfortunately, like any novel virus that they would come in contact with, their immune system, their immune system is just not strong enough to fend it off. But for many elderly, elderly individuals as well, many elderly don't have the strength as well in their immune system to survive the vaccine as well. This is another interesting article that I'm going to leave. Um, this person really did a fantastic job of just laying out evidence upon evidence upon evidence upon evidence and this is also talking about that exact same one um actually no this is this is a different one this is up in uh, syracuse.com um, that there was an outbreak at a cayuga uh, county nursing home i think maybe this was the same one let me see yeah auburn's right COVID outbreak at Auburn's nursing home infects 137 residents and kills 24. And this is after they started vaccinating, right? And so as a nurse, it's important that we educate the public on what is going on. It's not just that we just sit there and you know, tell you that it's amazing. Go out there and, you know, and get your vaccine today, right? Get two if you can. It's important to tell people, to tell people the truth. Tell people, the, tell people the truth of what potentially can happen. I'll link both of these articles. And again, these are new articles. This article is, is January 9th, uh, 2021. And this one is even more in-depth. This one is even more in-depth. And again, it's a conjunction with what I just talked about here. Uh, Ron Paul, who is also a physician, had made mention of the exact same thing. I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.